Hello everyone. Let's start today with a new lesson on ratio and proportion. First, let's have a look at what exactly is ratio. Comparing two quantities by division is called ratio. The ratio form of 3 divided by 2 is written as 3 ratio to and is read as 3 is to 2 in the ratio 3 ratio 2 3 and 2 are both called the terms of the ratio in fractional form we write it like 3 divided by 2 and in ratio form we use colon mark and write 3 ratio 2 now we have some important points first point says the two quantities compared should be of the same kind now this is very important because we cannot compare rupees 100 and 5 mangoes the quantities have to be same either you compare rupee to rupee or mangoes to mangoes second point says two or more quantities compared should be expressed in the same unit again Let's have a look. Ratio of rupees five to thirty paise has to be precisely written like five hundred paise to thirty paise, or rupees five to rupees zero point three zero. You cannot compare rupees and paise otherwise. Third point says the names. All units of two quantities should not be used in ratio. Ratio of five meter to six meter cannot be written like five meter ratio six meter. Please remember, everyone. Ratios are expressionless, unitless quantities. We are basically comparing two things. So when you compare two things, you do not ever write units. Next point says ratio should always be expressed in the simplest possible form. Let's have a look. 12 ratio 24 should be written as 1 ratio 2 because both are divisible by 12. Same way 14 ratio 16 should be written as 7 ratio 8 because both the terms are divisible by 2. next we move on to proportion a statement of equality of ratios is called proportion let's have a look 6 upon 10 we can write it like 3 upon 5 in the lowest possible form same way 48 upon 80 we can write it like 3 upon 5 in the lowest possible form both the numbers are divisible by 8 and then by 2 Thus, we can say that six, ten, forty-eight, and eighty are in proportion. Why we said that these numbers are in proportion? Because they gave us the same ratio after being divided. Thus, we write six ratio ten is proportional to forty-eight ratio eighty, and we read it like. What six is to ten as forty-eight is to eighty. The numbers six, ten, forty-eight, eighty are called terms of proportion. Now let's try and understand this topic. Six becomes our first term, ten becomes the second term, forty-eight third term, and eighty fourth term. Six and eighty. These are at the extreme ends, first and fourth. Therefore, these are known as extremes. the middle terms those are second term and third term 10 and 48 are known as means now always remembers product of extremes here is 6 into 80 that comes out to be 
product of means is equal to 10 into 48 that is 480. Both the products are equal that is product of extremes is equal to product of means. If such a case arises that shows that the four numbers are in same proportion. Thus if four numbers are in proportion then product of extremes has to be equal to the product of means. This is how we verify whether four given numbers are in proportion or not. Next we move forward to continued proportion. If three numbers A, B, C are in proportion such that A ratio B is proportion to four, uh, B ratio C then A, B, C are said to be in continued proportion. For example, Let's have a look. Take numbers 2, 10 and 50. These three numbers are in continued proportion because 2 ratio 10 is 1 ratio 5. 10 ratio 50 is also 1 ratio 5. So that means 2 ratio 10 is proportional to 10 ratio 50. Thus, if A ratio B is proportional to B ratio C and we know that product of means is equal to product of extremes therefore B square is equal to AC please remember this is a very important formula for continued proportion product of means becomes B square and product of extremes is AC and it will always be equal Hope you like this lesson. See you soon with a new lesson on percentage. Thank you.